taxes issued to federal tax liens totaling more than $180,000 on the property of 24-year selectman Kevin Greeley Boston.com has reported. The report follows the January 7th publication of a story on true persons about the liens. I am Bob Sprague reporting from you. You are Arlington. I am Martha Batten. Yes, in these economic times, some people cannot pay their taxes. There but for fortune. It is a sad day when someone anonymously reports people to the Boston Globe for serious financial problems. That is, for me, the more compelling part of this report. I am Mark Kipline. How's the tax override thingy working out for you, Mr. Greeley? Yes, many Arlington residents are struggling and didn't need the tax override piled on top of other burdens. The Internet and public records are a wonderful thing where you or Zillow or real estate agents can look up property transactions, mortgages, liens, etc. Anybody could have alerted the Globe that Lawrence Mayor Willie Lantigua's $5,450 owed in state taxes was a minor story compared to our chairman of the Board of Selectmen owing $180,000. What's really interesting is when you compare property tax valuations with purchase prices and try to understand why housing corporations, apartment buildings, chairman of assessment boards, and others have assessments about half of what they actually paid for properties, something not all residents get. For the record, I am not the monotony observer. I make no attempt to hide my identity and like cyclists who criticize me and the use of democracy to give residents what they want on Mass Avenue. I am sauerkraut, an anonymous poster. An IRS lien does not happen overnight. An unpaid taxes for $180,000 does not happen over the course of just a few years. The liens are not a mere matter of some people cannot pay their taxes, something which applies only to some unfortunates who cannot pay one year's taxes due to misfortune. I've worked a few tax cases, none of which reached $180,000 over less than six to eight years. Frankly, any elected official who does not pay his or her taxes to that extent ought to resign. Now. A brave declaration. Who are you? I am Bob Sprague. I am Martha Batten. Yes, no doubt, financial troubles rarely happen overnight. This financial recession is almost five years old. I cannot tell you how many people I know who are in deep debt. I do not judge people on that basis alone. I am Corey Gaffney. Yes, Martha. My first thought was back three years ago, when Kevin Greeley organized a massive concert at Town Hall to help bridge the gap for the Arlington Public Schools. Let us not be so quick to judge someone on their personal matters. Thank you, Corey. I am Sauerkraut, an anonymous poster. I say this to Bob Sprague. None of your beeswax. If you won't stand behind your public opinion about a public official with your real name, why should anyone take you seriously? Are you joining the anonymous campaign targeting Mr. Greeley? I am Bob Sprague. See the updated story at you. You are Arlington. I am Martha Batten. I think those that remain anonymous do not want to live in glass houses. Better for throwing stones. I am Joe Tully. I guess it's a matter of perspective. I'd prefer that everyone identify themselves, but I'm not going to obsess about it. When you start harping on someone's anonymity it appears to me that you're afraid to tackle the subject matter itself, so you shift the argument to be about someone's anonymity. I am Sauerkraut, an anonymous poster. I choose to remain anonymous in great part due to online bullying attitudes like Mr. Sprague's. He should focus on my message rather than the messenger. As for glass houses, I pay my taxes and pay them on time. As for targeting Mr. Greeley, no. I stated my piece and that's that. I see no need to hound him. I am not bullying anyone, nor is the list's moderator who cited the policy about anonymity. My response focus on both your identity and your message. Without the former, your message lacks credibility. I am Bob Sprague. See the updated story at Yo. You are. Arlington. I am David Curran. It would be fair to accuse Bob Sprague of being curious. As a former teacher, I had experience with bullying and this doesn't come close. When one evaluates a statement, part of that evaluation includes the credibility of the speaker. That's why people say, consider the source. By exercising the right to remain anonymous, you only draw attention away from your message and to yourself. Hi, I am another anonymous poster. 
I would amend Mr. Kern's last statement slightly, by exercising the right to remain anonymous asterisk in an explicit and outspoken way asterisk, you only draw attention away from your message and to yourself. The best way, in my opinion, to be anonymous, without drawing attention away from the message, is to simply not respond when being asked about your identity. There is nothing wrong with being anonymous though. Carry on. I am Wes Beale. I find myself agreeing with the rationale behind opposing anonymity, but have a knee-jerk appreciation of the practice of anonymity as conducted during the American Revolution and many other times when anonymity allowed speakers to say things they would not otherwise be at liberty to say. Of course, when the author is identified, his or her statement automatically has more credibility. And especially when a person, public or private, is criticized anonymity draws attention away from the criticism. Here, I believe, sauerkraut's anonymity comes from spite of being asked as much as anything else, and believe that with a little research I could identify the speaker. It doesn't measure up to the defense granted by anonymity historically, and the speaker should think about how long they intend to keep it up, before the game outweighs the intention of their speech. Sauerkraut, I fully sympathize. Bob is asterisk such asterisk a bully, asking pesky questions like, who are you? What is the source of your info? And other questions of fact. Facts really get in the way of our most important story themes, like It's Morning in America and Mission Accomplished. To paraphrase Al Gore, facts really do present us with inconvenient truths. I'd love to be reassured that climate change is a hoax that I don't have to worry about, but I find such reassurance hard to find, coming from Exxon. People asterisk always asterisk want to know asterisk who asterisk is saying something. Worse, absent accurate information, they tend to make inferences. For instance, knowing only your online handle, im sauerkraut, I'd infer that you're a German with a sour disposition. Perhaps you have a somewhat specier brother or cousin, em kimchi. As for your paying your taxes on time, I'd like to verify that. Could you tell me who you are so that I can? Also, your address, so I can tell whether you live in a glass house, 